when we talk about this whole issue of race, white fear, and power, they cannot stand it when we have this. Tucker Carlson, Fox News, perfect example. This is Tucker on Fox going off on the diverse federal judges appointed by President Joe Biden in his first two years in office. So the point of diversity, equity, and inclusion, as you often heard, is to wind up with a leadership class that, quote, looks like America. Now, we think you should hire on the basis of merit, but that's kind of an appealing idea. The people who run the country should look like the country. <laughs> that's not what it's about at all, because no administration has ever looked less like America just by the numbers than the Biden administration. It's not about making the administration look like America. It's about discriminating against certain classes of people who don't vote for them, period. And now it's provable. Jeremy Carl at the Claremont Institute just ran the numbers, and this is in the ju judiciary. He found that out of 97 federal judges confirmed under Joe Biden, total number of white men, five. 22 are black women. So this is race-based hiring. It's illegal, but it's also not about looking like America. It's about punishing people. And it's also incidentally, or maybe not incidentally, producing nominees for federal So uh, what I want you to understand, um, oh my God. Biden has only named five white men as judges. Would you like to go through history, Tucker, and see how many black people were overlooked for federal judicial positions? Constance Baker Motley, first black female federal judge. So we're saying that black women were not qualified before? Oh, maybe it's because they were not allowed to attend law schools. Ah, that could be it. See, I need everybody to understand. What the Tuckers of the world don't like is they don't like it when white men don't dominate. So Tucker goes Oh, this is, this is just so unfair that, that he's discriminating because he named 22 uh, black women. Uh, mm, that, 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 that's interesting because w when you look at Trump, when you look at his administration, and, and, and y'all notice, y'all notice um, Tucker didn't mention the race of all those white men appointed uh, by them. Hmm. One in six judges. Go to my uh, iPad, please. Um, I want you to pull it. I want y'all to see this here because, see, you need to understand. I'm going to show you what Tucker Carlson and Fox News will never show you because they don't have the guts to show you. Hmm. About one in six of the judges appointed by Trump were black, Hispanic, Asian or another race of ethnicity. That means 84% of all of the federal judges appointed by Trump were white. Mm. Ain't that interesting? Now, mind you, that's fewer folks than George W. Bush. Now, go back. You see right here. That's slightly below the proportion of non-white judges appointed by the last Republican president, George W. Bush, and well below the share appointed by the last three Democratic presidents. As is the case with women judges, Democratic presidents have generally been more likely than their GOP counterparts to appoint racial or ethnic minorities to the bench. So let's look at the numbers right here. Hmm, it's, ain't that something? Donald Trump appointed 226 federal judges. 189 of them were white. Wow. Not just nine black, just nine Hispanic, 13 Asian, other is six. Huh, but look at that. Obama, two, 320 judges. 205 white, 58 black, 
George W. Bush, 322 judges. 264 white, 24 black. Bill Clinton, 367 judges. 277 white, 61 black. But look at Ronald Reagan. 335, 358 federal judges, 335 white, seven black, lowest out of anybody, 14 Hispanic, third lowest out of anybody, two Asian, tied for second lowest, other zero. Reagan and George H.W. Bush had the lowest numbers of total of non-white judges. Actually, so, the, so the, the, this is the top three of the total non-white judges. George H.W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, and Donald Trump. Uh-oh. That means, and first of all, let me go... And George W. Bush was one better than Jimmy Carter. So out of seven presidents, the three with the least non-white federal judges are all Republican. Tucker Carlson mentioned none of that. None of that. Press play on Tucker. So I need y'all to hear this, folks. Go ahead and the numbers, and this is in the ju judiciary, he found that out of 97 federal judges confirmed under Joe Biden, total number of white men, five. 22 are black women. So this is race-based hiring. It's illegal, but it's also not about looking like America. It's about punishing people. And it's also incidentally, or maybe not incidentally, producing nominees for federal judgeships who know nothing about the Constitution. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Now, I know some of you may say, oh, okay, all right, that's one thing here. But Eugene, what I need, I'm trying to get people to understand here is what the Tuckers of the world, he's telling his audience, the Fox News audience, number one on cable news, he's telling them, they're taking over. Biden is stealing from you. Biden doesn't want your white sons to have these jobs. Now, again, Tucker Carlson never said a word, not a single word about all of the white men Donald Trump appointed. Never said a word that, hey, are blacks being underrepresented? in judicial appointments from Donald Trump? No, didn't say any of that because they don't care about black people. Fox News and Tucker Carlson has gone full white nationalist and they are the aggrieved network. And I have been saying since 2009, we are living in the age of what I call white minority resistance. Even though white people make up a majority of America, they are, they, are, they are being driven by Fox News and conservative talk radio and these digital operations as well, that white people are losing everything to those other people. Look, the thing is this, I mean, we know Tucker Cross was, isn't about you know, white supremacists. Uh, he was one of the folk that were pushing you know, the whole replacement theory. Um, you know, he's been stroking these flames forever. Um, it's what keeps him on air. It's what keeps his viewers there. Um, and it's what should be expected from him. Um, you know, he's one of those folk that, you know, that, that, you know, for him, the wider, the better. You know, of course, he wasn't going to call out the misrepresentation or the underrepresentation of black folk and, 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 and Hispanic folk being uh, appointed to judgeships during the Trump uh, era and even probably back to the Bush era, right? But, you know, God forbid, you know, the scales are more balanced under the Biden administration. And, um, you know, one more time, he, you know, just uses it now to just stroke his uh, flames of replacement theory. See, right there, right there, uh, right there on that issue right there, Crystal, is what we have to deal with. 
in terms of in terms of what they're saying. So when they drill the white replacement, this whole re- great replacement theory, it's all oh, they're replacing us. No, y'all just stop having kids. And what angers the Tucker Carlson's is that, and let's, let's understand, uh, Crystal, Tucker Carlson is an abysmal failure, okay? And you want to see white privilege. He had a TV show on CNN, canceled. MSNBC, canceled. PBS, canceled. It was on the weekend on Fox News. Bill O'Reilly gets run out because of sexual harassment. Tucker takes over his slot. He goes full bore white nationalism. Ratings go sky high. So of all people who want to talk about talent and what's fair, he really should shut the hell up because he embodies one, a silver spoon being born in his mouth, a trust fund baby. He epitomizes white privilege. But what he is doing is he is simply, and this ain't dog whistling. They are now yelling with megaphone, <laughs> megaphones. Hey, white people, they're taking everything from us. You must rise up and stop this. Absolutely. I think you're, you know, you're right in that white men get the option to fail up. You mentioned all of the shows that were not successful on the different networks that were unsuccessful with him having with having him there. And yet Fox News gives him the platform to be who he probably secretly already was. You know, this white nationalist pushing this great replacement theory, which ultimately for him means the more we create space, the the, wide, the, the wider we allow the table to become, it really means less for me and mine. It means less for white men who think and look exactly like me. And I agree that there aren't any more dog whistles from Tucker Carlson. Those are just, it's straight talk. It is talking directly to the base of people in this country who believe that dangerous rhetoric. And it's white White men who are whining about what they do not have when ultimately we know that this country was built um, with white men in mind in all of the power structures of our country. And so I always find it unique that you have people like Tucker Carlson who continue to complain about the country becoming browner, diversity being increased in a number of different areas because they ultimately see it as a threat to the foundation of their structure in this country which is white nationalism. Here's the deal, uh, Robert. I love when uh, little Tucker goes, oh, these people are not qualified. Nine of Trump's judicial nominees were rated unqualified by the American Bar Association. Nine, nine of them. But here's what's interesting. Go to my iPad, please, Anthony. Right here. None of Donald Trump's 53 confirmed appeals court judges were black. Not a single one, quote, that makes Donald Trump the first president since Richard Nixon to go a full first term without selecting a black nominee for a federal appeals court. In in Tucker's world, well, clearly there are no black people qualified to be on the federal appeals court. Well, you know, Roland, what's more concerning, and and this is going to be jarring to Tucker's audience if they see this at some point in time, is that Tucker Carlson is a racist. He's not a white supremacist. He's not a white nationalist. Tucker Carlson's from San Francisco. Uh, He comes from, his full name is Tucker Swanson Carlson, a friend of mine. Uh, He's from the Swanson Chicken Broth family. That's where his family gets their money from. And so, as you said, he's been through talk radio, been through uh, cable news on various networks. He had mornings with Tucker before Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika Bredenti took over that time slot as a very middle of the road to progressive uh, television show. The concerning part for me is that this message found an audience and found an audience that dominates cable news ratings. The fact that he doesn't believe these things and understands that he can simply repeat them and make millions of dollars, the same way that we've seen grifter after grifter on the Republican side of the aisle start picking up these talking points then my pillow salesman uh, started becoming a white nationalist and made millions of dollars off it. Donald Trump incorporated white nationalism and rolled that into the White House. We have an entrenched group of uh, white people in this country who are so fearful of becoming a minority group, who are so fearful of black domination. David Duke was talking about this back in the 1980s when he talked about the replacement numbers, that white people were not having enough children to replace themselves, let alone maintain their majority, and that that will lead to conflict going 
forward. As long as these people see this as being a racialized battle, a zero-sum game, that every time that a black person or brown person receives something is automatically stolen from you, this is your birthright, this is your uh, the, the spoils of your land, you know, uh, uh, then we're going to continue to see um, this increased level of violence and hatred and rage on the part of white people in this country. Something has to be done to tamp down uh, the levels of anger and violence among white people because you're creating this contraburnium of lectures that are simply profiting off of this white rage and white fear uh, and what they don't understand is at some point the the monster gets out. You're no longer able to control them. This goes from simply being uh, talking points on a television show to actually trying to fight back against a counterinsurgency that has weapons, that has supplies, right. that has bug out bags, and they're ready to get away. But Robert, you're not going to be tamping it down because the reality is they make money from it. And they know that. This is why you had those racists who attacked the power grid in Baltimore. This is why you have these racists attacked in the country. This is why the FBI director says that white domestic terrorism is the biggest threat to this country and so they are fueling this hatred they love talking about oh y'all are playing the victim all oh, your race hustlers when in fact they are simply stoking white fear that's why i wrote the book why i said uh, the changing america is making white folks lose their minds that's what tucker and them are doing because this is about money it is about power mississippi they want to take over that water system they want that 800 million from the federal government they don't want black folks actually being able to control it they, and, and they then understand the whole attack on DEI and, and multiculturalism and everything, they want to stop everything dealing with trying to change this country for the better in corporate America, in our schools, in every single system, because they are saying, damn it, we're losing control. They're taking over. And I keep warning black people, this ain't gonna, this was never gonna end with Trump out. Black people, these folks are serious. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. We talk about blackness and what happens in black culture. We're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com.